Coach, uh, from being down 23 to the run you made in the fourth quarter, wow. what did you see that you can take away as a foundation to build upon moving forward? Oh, so incredible efforts being made. Uh, one, defensively to guard James Harden. I mean, good grief. He's, they do so much different stuff to loosen him up. And, you know, credit to, to, to Russ Taylor and Stanley Johnson just for fighting them the way they did. You know, uh, Stanley Johnson was fantastic on him. And, you know, for a guy just getting moved up, that's that's pretty big time. Um, you know, it's just a tale of quarters. You know, we give up 38, then we come back and score 39, we give up 36, we go back and score 33, and we just, you know, we couldn't put together consecutive quarters for whatever reason. So I got to go back and watch the film and figure it out. And Malik from missing five games to oh. coming in and scoring 20. What can you say about the energy he provided for you guys fantastic. tonight? That's fantastic. I mean, it's, again, these are so, these circumstances are not normal. And I think folks at home, it might be easy to say, oh, he's just like sitting out normal. But it's not. These guys are sick. They got COVID. It's a virus, right? And so they're laying around all day. They can't go work on their game or break a sweat or do anything. And then they jump right back into this. And for him to be able to do that, uh, he really gave us a huge, huge boost tonight. And uh, credit to him. Him and, 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 you know, I didn't mention him, but I mean, we, we throw Darren Collison in the mix. This guy comes right from home and competed his tail off and looked like an NBA player out on the basketball court. You know, and uh, that's, that's pretty dang good for a guy that was just at home. <laughs> Is we've been talking for a couple weeks now about these circumstances that you guys are, are trying to navigate, but the Nets are a team that you know have had it pretty bad too when it yeah. comes to the protocols. Yeah. What What do you take away from the fact that you know through again the fourth quarter comeback you know kind of you know took some of the stink off, but you, you were down twenty to a team that you know had had it basically just as bad as you guys had throughout this whole situation. Yeah. I don't know yet. I really want to get into the film and watch it. Uh, like I said, it's just too many waves in the game and not enough consistent, solid basketball play through, you know, through four quarters. And so, you know, I don't want to speculate right now. I know I've learned from some of my older coaches to, before I talk, go watch the film on that. Yeah. There's kind of two for you. Um, okay. LeBron plays 40 <laughs> minutes, scores 39 points. Oh and and it's at, been at this level for a few weeks now, but it hasn't translated to winning. Um, I'm kicking myself in the head because he's giving me incredible effort. And I'm trying to figure out ways to get him over the hump with that effort. Um, and I hate that it's wasted on losses. Um, but it's spectacular. And I hate that it's wasted on losses. But to watch it and to be a part of it, you know, even though those games are turning into L's, I've never seen anything like this guy. I mean, we better sure as hell be thanking our lucky stars for this guy. This guy has played. He has given us the most beautiful basketball over the last however many years, and he's still giving it to us on Christmas Day. Did he break the record today scoring? Yeah. Yes. That's fantastic. At least I can say I was there for that. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then a quick follow-up. Um, you know, Russ is a guy who, who's supposed to help with this and has largely um, – but the missed dunk, um, a, a couple, a handful of missed layups today. Um, he's had a handful of missed layups this year. I guess w what's the message to a player like that who's accomplished so much? Who's got to keep attacking. That's who he is, man. He's a he's a rim attacking finisher, and for whatever reason, he just missed him. You know, I, a big part of it is he just wants it so bad. I mean, you can see it, and I'm like, it's like I think everybody feels it. He wants it so bad, and. You know, I just know that's hard for him when it doesn't work out. And I know he cares like crazy. This is everything to him. Uh, and sometimes it just doesn't work out that way. Um, you know, but we had a couple other missed layups in the fourth as well that oh, would have just really been a, a game changer for us. But, you know, I, I, I just want him to take a lot of that pressure off himself and, and just, you know, keep attacking and keep playing uh, the way we know he can. Uh, obviously, you guys decided pretty early on to get away from your traditional centers and, and Dude, lean on fast, them. man. <laughs> I, I was wondering if maybe you could describe that and, and just how much Stanley Johnson contributed to that thinking. Yeah, that was a. If we, I don't know if we could have even done that if Stanley wasn't here. Uh, but 
Brooklyn. I mean, the way that they run the floor and the way that they run their routes, I mean, you see Patty Mills, he never stops. That's, he's made his career on that motor. Um, but, you know, we figured it out early on that, you know, our bigs, this isn't a game for our bigs tonight. And uh, I didn't want to put them in that bad spot. And once we made the shift, uh, you know, uh, you know, we made a run to get the game back close by halftime. And I just made the decision that the spacing looked good. Um, you know, our defensive coverages was giving us a chance. And I thought bringing Melo into the starting lineup to start the half would be good for us. Fizz, your defense in the fourth quarter, I mean, I know you can't do that for 48 minutes, but how can you get that expanded a little bit more than just the fourth quarter? Well, I know as a staff, we're going to keep hammering at it. And a big part of it, again, is, is we got to get more reliable to the little things, um, mm. the fundamentals of our defense. And, you know, we just have too many chunks of the game where that breaks down and we're playing makeup, you know. And we just got, we need more consistent focus, more consistent effort for four quarters. All right. Cash, yeah, David, come in on Zoom. Hey, Dave. Hey, Fizz. Merry Christmas. Merry uh, Christmas. I know this number isn't always representative of what happens in the game, but plus minus tonight when LeBron's on the court for 40 minutes is plus 11, and the eight minutes he sits, it's minus 18. Uh, what can you guys do to clone him? Play 48 minutes or uh, clone him? We can clone him. Can we? You know any good scientists? We can maybe make a duplicate. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. He just. I don't know how it. You know, we just gotta figure that out. Is is when when we do have those gaps, so he's out of the game. How do we keep that uh, momentum going offensively and defensively? So we'll keep looking at those stretches of the game. Keep looking at ways to help our team, and you know, a lot of the time, you know, that's also a time where I got probably more guys on the court that don't know each other right now. And offensively, we probably get a little stagnant. Defensively, we're not totally connected. And teams are seasoned on that, um, that, that unfamiliarity, I think. Um, but I'm going to watch those gaps in the game, obviously, and analyze them and really scrutinize them and see what we can do to help those groups out when he is out of the game. Hey, Jordan. Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas, Coach. Um, just wanted to ask you about Carmelo Anthony. Uh, he's done a lot better defensively for you guys. He has 17 points, never rebounds, two steals, three blocks. Communicating a lot on defense. Just wanted to get your thoughts. You know, uh, they said Melo couldn't play in the NBA two years ago. So here's a guy that was supposed to be done, buried, out of the league, and here he is still contributing. Uh, and getting better, like you said, defensively, he's improving uh, at this age and really committing to the details and the fundamentals of our defense. Um, you know, really understanding what we need from him on this team, from when it's a post up against a, ice, a smaller guy uh, to a space in the floor or picking and popping. Uh, he's giving us all of that stuff. And, uh, and, and the thing that I just didn't realize about him was that, you know, he uses his voice as well as anybody. And defensively, I think you see him, he's out there barking at people, man, and really, really getting people in the right places and, you know, executing coverages at a high level. And that's pretty cool to see for a guy that everybody said couldn't play in the NBA anymore.